as it relates to prayer. Amen. And so we open our hearts and minds to something new about prayer, uh, maybe letting go of an old belief or an old idea or old view of what prayer is. Our scripture for the day is found in John chapter e, it's John chapter 6 and verse number 6. This is the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Um, and there are 5,000 men. It doesn't even include the women and the children. Uh, and so he probably fed about 15 to 20,000 people, but the scripture, you know, focuses on the men that were fed. And Jesus fed the 5,000 because feeding was a normal part of his ministry, that when people came to um, hear him teach, after he taught, he would also feed them. That feeding was a part of his ministry. Sometimes feeding them before, sometimes feeding them after. That's why he says some people only follow him for the fishes and the loaves. They knew if they went to hear Jesus teach or preach that they were going to get a free meal. And a lot of times people are looking for a free meal. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Give me some hearts. If you know that sometimes people are looking for a free meal. And so uh, it wasn't about Jesus. It wasn't about his teaching. They wanted to see another miracle and they desired to get a free meal. And sometimes people come to church because they're looking to receive, you know, it's not about them changing or growing in Christ consciousness or um, becoming a better person or living a better life. They got those dinners after church and I desire to get something to eat. Um, also uh, for entertainment, oh, the dancers are going to be there. The singers are going to be there. Something's going to happen. Interesting. Somebody's going to fall out. Somebody's going to run around the church. And so church has become about people's entertainment, but not really about them having an encounter with God that changes their life. And it's no different now than it was back during the time of Jesus. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Give me some hearts. I know that you've never been there. I know that you've never gone to church for entertainment. I know that you've never gone there uh, for what you can get out of it uh, physically without actually changing. But if you know somebody that has ever done that, give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Give me some hearts. All right, so Jesus asked them a question, um, and he said to them, he said, oh my God, all these people, what are we going to do? Where are we going to find bread for these many people? And he's having a conversation. He's having a dialogue with his disciples, and they're saying, oh my God, even if we had this much money, where would we find a store that would provide for so many people? And so Jesus having this dialogue with the disciples about how these 5,000 people are going to be fed, and he's giving them an opportunity to think because Jesus was a metaphysician um, and he taught his disciples to think. He's asking them, how are we going to handle this situation? He's developing leaders. Uh, so when you're developing leaders, you present them with a situation and see what they come up with based upon what it is that they've been taught, based upon what they have learned, based on where they are in consciousness. You ask them, what do you think about this? And so Jesus is inviting the disciples to really think, to use their resources, their tools, what it is that they have already learned and been taught as a result of following Jesus, and he's asking them, what are we going to do about the situation? But the scripture says in John 6 and 6 that he asked them already knowing what he was going to do. And therefore, our subject for today is praying in the already. God does not ask you a question that God does not already know the answer to. Whenever you're being asked a question by God, you're being asked so that you can rise to a level in consciousness. But God is omniscience. God is all knowledge, not just all knowing. God is all knowledge. There is no knowledge without, without God. God is all the knowledge that there is. God is all seeing. Um, God is not just all seeing. God is all sight. God is all the sight there is, all the perspectives, all the angles, all the vantage points by which you can look at a situation. God is omniscient. So it's not that he didn't know the answer that he was asking them about what was going to be done. He already knew what he was going to do. It was about them being aware of their location. And that look at the question that God um, asked Adam and Eve. He said, where are you? And uh, it's not that God didn't know where they were. God knew exactly where they were, but it was for them to identify where were they. And Jesus, following in the Father's example, often asked people a question, will you be made whole? Uh, do you believe? And so Jesus already knows the answer to these questions, but the question is getting the person to make a conscious 
um, to have a conscious awareness of where they are, of what's going on with them, and what they're thinking, what they're feeling. And so what Jesus is doing is he already knew what he was going to do, but he's getting them to be aware. He's getting them to think. He's getting them to process. So God never asks you a question that God does not already know the answer to. And so prayer uh, is about praying in the already. But many of us, uh, the Bible says that God has already given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, um, according to him who has called us to glory and virtue. So many people, they don't pray in the already. Because we have these images of God that stop us from praying in the already. And then when I say pray in the already, you go up against these images and it's like, mm -mm. that people think prayer is magical, that when they pray, something magical happens. Uh, Pulling point number one, uh, some people's image of God is Santa Claus. And that's how they look at prayer. You know, like little children, they make their Christmas list. I want this for Christmas. What do you want for Christmas? And so you write down your list of what you uh, want for Christmas and um, you prioritize your list because some of the things you might get, some of the things you may not get. Um, and so this whole image of the Santa Claus God that um, if you've been naughty or if you've been nice determines whether or not you get it, uh, that you, if you've done something wrong that you can't receive it or, you know, if you've been bad or didn't get a good report card, then you don't get certain things for Christmas. So many times when people are praying, they're thinking about prayer like that, that God is like Santa Claus. If I've done something wrong, that I'm not worthy to receive what I'm praying for, um, that I may not get everything that I desire because, you know, my parents may not be able to afford to get me everything. That prayer is this magical fantasy thing. That I got to go to sleep in order to get my prayer answered, that I can't be conscious, I can't be awake in order to receive what it is that I desire. And so many people, when they think of prayer, they think of Santa Claus. They think of God as a big, fat old Santa Claus that's going to come down their chimney, spitting out gifts and giving out toys. And um, that's how people, a lot of people, when they pray, they may not be aware of this consciously, but they're still under this Easter bunny, Santa Claus, tooth fairy mentality when they pray. That that's their consciousness. You know, if I go to sleep and I put under my pillow, when I wake up, boom, magic is going to happen. Um, that if I put my tooth under the, um, the, under the pillow, that the tooth fairy is going to take the tooth and then they're going to put this, you know, $5 or $10 or $1 under my pillow. When I wake up, boom, the tooth is going to be gone and the dollar is going to be there. Uh, or that the Easter bunny is going to bring me these gifts for Easter, a new Easter outfit. And so we have these magical ideas about prayer and that it's a based upon, you know, if you do this, that you have to earn it, that God is going to do that. And it's all of these things that we're praying from this space of childhood, that we're praying from this space of fantasy. We're praying from this space of magic. Magic. And the God is not Santa Claus, you know, and it's not based upon whether you've been naughty or nice. There's nothing that you can ask for that God cannot give you. God does exceeding abundantly above all that you could ask or even think. So we have all these holidays and images of these characters in our mind like superheroes, like, you know, like prayers, like, um, like Superman to the rescue. That when I pray, God is going, boom, come and rescue me, Wonder Woman. And we have all of these uh, characters in our mind. And when we think of prayer, we think about this spooky thing that's going to happen as a result because I'm in crisis and I'm a damsel in distress and God is going to rescue me. And so that's how we think about prayer. And I'm telling you, that's not, that's not how prayer works. So pulling point one, can you let go of the Santa Claus image <clears throat> of God as it relates to prayer? And along with that, the Easter bunny, along with that, the, the tooth fairy, along with that, the superheroes coming to the... Can you let go of those images of prayer where it's something magical that happens? Give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Give me some hearts if you're able to let go of that image. Come on, give me some thumbs. I'm waiting for you. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Give me some hearts. This is Thought-Provoking Thursday. This is, I'm giving you something to think about. This is something to ruffle your feathers, something for you to grapple with, something for you to really pray. And, and when I'm praying, am I thinking of God like that? Am I thinking of the process of my prayer being answered like that? Are you able to release that and let that go? 
Give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Give me some hearts. Because when people are praying, this is how they're thinking. They're thinking that this is what's, this is what's happening. Santa Claus is coming to town and he's going to bring me my stuff because I've been good. Pulling point number two. Some people, when it comes to prayer, um, they don't have the Santa Claus image, but they have the short order cook image. That, you know, you get a menu and you pick what you desire and um, the waiter comes and writes down your order. They holler it out to the cook in the back or now they got, you know, things where they type it in. I, I went to a restaurant in Greece and they took my order via their cell phone. And they wrote my order, you know, in their cell phone. It's like a text. And they got to the cook in the back where there was no writing it down via paper. They just do it electronically. And now they got these little computers where, you know, they take your order, tip, tap, tip, tap, tap. And that's how people think of God, you know, that I get into the space of worship. And if I get into the place of worship and praise and, you know, give God all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, that I can get to the point where I can put my order in and I can tell God what I want. And if I wait and if I be still, that God is going to make it in the back and God is going to, then the waiter is going to come and serve it to me. That we have this idea that things are happening in our lives because we prayed. Because I gave my order and they took my order. They go in the back and they make it. And what's being made in the back is according to what I have ordered, according to what I have prayed. And people think of prayer and God is like a short order cook where you yell it out and, you know, and then, but at the end of the short order cook image, you got to pay for it. So it's like I have to sacrifice something in order to get what it is that I desire. I got to pay for it. You know, I have to sacrifice something in order to receive what it is I desire. And I'm telling you, God is not a short order cook. Things are not happening because you pray. Anything that could happen has already happened. Anything that can be done has already been done. It's not you placing an order and it's not, oh, this happened because I prayed. Things don't happen because you pray. You happen when you pray. Ooh. Prayer does not change things. Prayer changes people. And change people, change things. And so we're thinking because we pray that something is happening. But when you pray, you happen. It's not something happening uh, in the things. What's happening is me. I'm being changed. I'm being transformed. I'm being lifted to a higher vibration. I'm seeing things differently. I'm hearing things differently. I'm knowing the truth. So it's not an order that I'm giving God and God is like your bellboy or your bellhop and you pray and God hops to it and jumps to it. That's not how prayer works. And so we got these bellboy ideas, you know, like you go to the hotel and you, you tell, tell them to bring you up some more towels and more washcloths and you call them and they bring it up and you give them a tip. And we think the tithing and giving offering is like giving God a tip for what God has done. And so we got all of these crazy ideas. I know I'm messing with people's theology this morning. It's like giving your tithes and your offering is like giving God a tip. You know, God, you've been good. You did a good job. You answered my prayers. So I'm gonna give you a tip. I'm gonna give you an extra tip this Sunday because you answered my prayer. And we think that prayer is like, and, and it's like God going in the back and God going to do it because you prayed. God is not doing anything because you prayed. What's happening in prayer is that you are being transformed. You are being conformed to the image of Christ. And when you come out of prayer, you've got direction of what you need to do. When you come out of prayer, you've got inspiration. You've got vision. You've got clarity. And so we're not praying in a consciousness that God is doing this because you prayed. What happens when you pray is that you change. That you unfold, you develop, you grow, you heal. Your, your prayer or your praise is not making God do anything. 
God is not, let me tell you, God is not doing anything. Whatever is to be done has already been done. That's why Jesus sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He said, it is finished. When he said it is finished, it means that everything that you need has already been done. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, by his stripes we are healed. Everything has been set in motion. Anything that you desire has already been done. It is already done in the spiritual realm. It's already done in the heavenly realm. It's already done in the supernatural realm. It's already done in the spiritual realm, in the invisible, in the intangible tangible. It is already done. So it's not happening because you asked and prayed about it. Oh, let's come on. We're going to pray about this. And then something is going to change because you prayed about it. No. What happened when you prayed is you changed. You evolved. You got to a place. All right, son. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Give me some hearts. That's how we sing the song. It's done. What I shall be, I already am. It's already done. And so you said, well, if, if, if God is not Santa Claus and I'm not making a list and checking it twice and he been checking to see if I'm naughty and nice, then what I'm praying for? And if God is not a short order cook that's taking my order and going in the back and making it and I'm going to give him a tip or a tithe or an offering as a result of how good the service was and what God did, what am I praying for? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Pulley point number three, it's not Santa Claus, it's not short order cook. The purpose of prayer, pulley point number three, is the realization that God is your supernatural source. The only reason that you are praying is so that you can realize that God is your supernatural source. That God is the source from which every blessing comes from. Prayer is for you to come to the realization. It's for you to rise in consciousness. And when you rise from the natural realm to the supernatural realm, you connect with what has already been done. When you rise from this earthly realm to the heavenly realm through prayer, then you connect with what's already been done. It's not that it's being done because you prayed. It was already done. But you rose to a place in consciousness where you were able to receive what was already done in the invisible, what was already done in the intangible realm, what was already done. You come to the realization of it and you begin to actualize what was already done. You get to a place where you know it, where you believe it, where you receive it, where you accept it. That that's what prayer is about. It's not for God. God doesn't need you to pray to do anything. You need you to pray so that you can be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you can go from glory to glory, so that you can go from faith to faith, so that you can go from strength to strength. Prayer is about you realizing that God is your supernatural source that has already been done. I align my mind with the divine mind of the universe. I align my mind with the divine order of the universe. And I know that it is already done. It has already been given. And so that's what prayer is. And even when you're praying with the person, you're praying with them for them to realize that they're already healed. When you're praying with a person, it's for them to realize that the way has already been made. The door has already been opened. It was there all the time. You just weren't in a place to see it. You weren't in a place to receive it, to believe it. But it was, was it already done. God didn't change because you prayed. God didn't press no buttons. God didn't zap nobody. Nothing magical happened because you prayed. The magic is your realization and knowing that God is my source and that anything that I could ever ask, come up with has already been done. That it's for you to be seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And when you are seated in that heavenly place in Christ Jesus, you are in that rest where you know that it is already done. The work has already been done. The way is already made. The door is already open. It's already done. The window of heaven is open. The door to your good is open. It is already done. Praying is praying in the already. He asked them a question. Them people were already fed. 
When Jesus asked them, what are we going to do about these people and how are we going to feed them? He already knew what he was going to do. The baskets were all, the people were already sitting down. The bath that they were already sitting down. The baskets were already there. The two fish were already there. The five loaves of bread was already there. The baskets were already there. The people were already fed. The fragments of the fish and the loaves were all, it was already done. He already knew what he was going to do. He already knew what was going to manifest in the physical realm because it was already done in the spiritual realm. He knew what was going to manifest in the natural realm because it was already done in the supernatural. He was trying to get them to realize. And to function in the already. And that's what prayer is. It is getting you to know the truth that all is well. It is getting you to realize that you are perfect, whole, and complete. Prayer is getting you to realize that there's nothing missing, nothing broken, and nothing out of place in you. Prayer is for you to awaken to the consciousness that you are God's beloved offspring and you are worthy and you deserve all the good that life has to offer. Prayer is about you. It's not for God. God doesn't need you to pray to do anything. God is not waiting on your command to do anything. God is not sitting around looking for another assignment from you. Because you prayed, you are rising in consciousness. And I know this may be contradictory to anything that you've ever heard before. And let me tell you, I'm a prayer warrior. I believe in going in. But it's for me. It's for the people. It's not for God. It's already done. But we don't believe it's already done. We don't know it's so you pray until you get to the point where you know it's already done. You pray until the you get to the point where you're at peace about it. You pray until you can feel the love, until you can experience the joy. Prayer is for you. God is waiting on you to get to this place in consciousness where all your gifts are, where all the answers are, where all the solutions are, to come up out of that low place in consciousness. To let go of those erroneous ideas of lack and limitation and sickness and pain and chaos and confusion. Let me tell you, this coronavirus, I see it already healed. I see it already dissolving into the nothingness from which it came. I'm not praying for it to be done. I know it is already done. This coronavirus is already healed. It has already been contained. It has already gone into the nothingness from which it came. The vaccine has already been given. I pray in the already. Thank you, God, that the coronavirus is healed. I'm not begging and pleading and negotiating and bargaining with God. Jesus said it's finished. It's done. What more can God give you? I'm trying to stop. But the Bible says, how can he not? He who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How can he not with him also freely give us all things? You have already been given all things. What more can you add to all things? All things that pertain to life and godliness. He's already freely given us all things. God has given you Jesus. God has given you the Holy Spirit. What more do you need? It's already done. I'm going to close with a different song. Fine for me, it's done. Uh, by um, um, I need to hear that. It's done. But I shall be. I already am. Uh, what is her name? Fine is done. That's what I, that's what I need to hear. That is, he's already freely given us all things. It's no strings attached. You don't need to bargain. What, you can't come up with anything beyond all things. Anita Wilson. Yes, it's all it's done. It's already done. And I know that this messes with people's mind as it relates to prayer. But God is trying to get you to come to another dimension of consciousness to know that it's already done. Your vision is already accomplished. Your mission is already fulfilled. Anything that you put your hands to is already done. Any place that your feet walk, it is already done. And so can you let go of the Santa Claus God? Can you let go of the Santa Claus God, the fairy godmother God, the tooth fairy God, the Easter bunny God? Can you let go of that God? Can you let go of the bellhop, short order cook God? Can you let go of that image? Can you let go of 
those images so you can really get to the truth that God is your inexhaustible source of good. I love you so much. God bless you. Sow a seed today. Meet a need. Boost this post. Somebody needs to know what prayer really is and what it's all about. So sow a seed today. Meet this. Meet a need. Boost this post to the hundreds of thousands of people can do it. Share this on your page. Tag somebody in this post. They might cuss you out. They may not speak to you no more, but they will know what prayer really is about. I love you so much. God bless you. Have a positive and productive day. No one is already done. Yes. What are you praying about? It's already done. Ask and give thanks. Yes. You can't see it, but it don't mean it's not done. Receive it. Thank you, God. It's already done. Woo! Thank you, God. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Woo! Thank you, God. God has already worked it out on your behalf. Friends, to open up your eyes, open up your ears, and cause you to receive it. Woo! Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Y'all have a wonderful day. God bless you.